was that you know we we learned from him and and uh, the love that he shared you know for us uh, you know our family was able fortunately the We're good. <clears throat> Dave, really appreciate your time here. Um, what's the last week been like? Uh, about family, Jim. Uh, just great remembrances, you know, of a, a life well lived. Um, you know, having 90 years with him and, and uh, um, just all the great lessons that, you know, we, we learned from him and the love that he shared, you know, for us, uh, you know, our family was able, fortunately, the uh, uh, restrictions on travel had loosened up enough to where, you know, our family could all get, make it into town, uh, and then uh, spent the week, you know, preparing for the services uh, on Thursday and Friday, the viewing, and then the uh, funeral mass, and, and then uh, entombment, um, and frankly, you know, you and I had talked earlier that uh, uh, the fact that by law it had to be a private ceremony uh, really uh, saved us a lot of, of uh, probably wrenching decisions when it came time to deciding you know who were who could who were who couldn't come to the services uh, so uh, the fact that it was just family you know in the church and uh, um, just made it made it special um, and then you know we're very much in favor and, and want to allow you know South Florida to uh, be able to celebrate uh, his life when the time is appropriate and uh, people can gather safely and you know and the Dolphins are and I know the Archdiocese of Miami are all in favor of that and would like to you know are planning tentatively as much as anybody can plan any gatherings these days uh, uh, an opportunity to celebrate his life. So many people uh, last Monday, Dave, when I uh, spoke to them about your dad, the word that kept coming up over and over was integrity and doing things the right way. Can you elaborate on that, what that meant to him? In my, in my talk uh, at the service uh, to my dad, I, uh, there were four generations of our family there, and I wanted my grandsons and, and his great-grandsons uh, my sister's kids, you know, that maybe didn't quite understand, my brother's daughters, that didn't, maybe they didn't quite understand, you know, why it was such a big deal. Why is there so much attention being spent on him? And, you know, and, it, and it's just not about how many games that he won. It's, it's the way he went about doing it. And, and to your point, you know, integrity. Uh, and the points that I brought up were, you know, first of all, he was a man of faith. Uh, but... Though he was very devout um, in his beliefs, he was very accepting of other people's beliefs. And that's an important lesson, you know, these days. Uh, and then honesty, you know, how much that meant to him uh, in being straightforward with the people. And, and I'm sure you experienced it like <laughs> I experienced at times, uh, anybody that was around him. Uh, and it wasn't any different with family. Sometimes you didn't like where you stood <laughs> at a particular moment. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, you were held accountable, and then it was over, uh, and you moved on. Um, I heard a great story from uh, Chris Mortensen, you know, renowned ESPN reporter, who came in the interview, and, and he said that uh, uh, he told the cameraman to, to wait, and uh, he then reamed uh, Chris Mortensen for having written an article that was critical of me <laughs> that <when> I was coaching. <laughs> and then when he finished, he said to the cameraman, okay, let's begin, and everything was fine after that. And that was a great example of how he could put things behind him. But he was going to speak his mind and be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. The next trait I talked about was, was trust, how important that was to him. You know, if you're honest uh, and, uh, and you build that uh, trust over a period of time with people. Um, and he, examples of, with, of that were, you know, the way that he treated different people, you know, over, over time. You know, the Bob Greasy's and the Larry Zonka's and the Bob Kuchenberg's and Larry Little's and, you know, the, the great players that, that he could trust, he would give them a little bit more leeway than, you know, he might guys that uh, he couldn't trust. Uh, respect uh, and, and how important that was to him to uh, make sure that he um, was very respectful of all the people, no matter who they were around him. Uh, and then, of course, are the rules, uh, you know, we're doing it the right way. 
teams were always the least penalized. He was on the rules committee in the NFL. Mm -hmm. He lived his life that way. You know, very. I made a, a comment to um, one of the um, articles last week that were written about him about the fact that you know it was uh, not even close that he was ever you know on the in the crime section of the sports page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, and then his drive, his competitive drive, you know, to uh, to want to win, and, and of course doing it in the right way, but wanting to win. Uh, there's so many great stories. Mike Westhoff, uh, all great Dolphin, you know, special sure. team coach and great great NFL special team coach over the years, uh, called me and we talked yesterday, and, and he related a story about how um, one of the uh, scouts right before the draft said, uh, Coach, well, it looks like we've wrapped things up. You know, the hay is in the barn. This is like 24 hours before the draft started. And he went off. The <laughs> hay is never in the barn. <laughs> and, you know, there's always another rock to be, uh, you know, uh, turned over. And uh, uh, so that relentless drive to, you know, to for perfection. And, and when you thought you were there, there was always something more you could do. Uh, and then, um, and then finally, being a lifelong learner uh, in how, you know, he believed uh, that change was inevitable you had to embrace that and then and what better example is you know the way that the Dolphins won in the 70s with the you know the ground game and Zonka yeah. kick and Morris and Bob Greasy throwing the ball five to ten times a game and then here comes Marino and then <laughs> Marino comes in mm -hmm. and seeing the talent there and you know I was fortunate to be a part of that you know when, when uh, Dan was drafted in 1983 and, and uh, on the offensive staff saw him say, okay, it's the same playbook, but, you know, we're going to go to this section <laughs> now, not, not that section. <laughs> and and uh, um, just seeing, you know, right from the beginning, you know, that, you know, we had a special talent and, and how, what we needed to change to do that. And, you know, here's a guy that had won Super Bowls and, and coached the team, you know, to perfection. And, and uh, he being a defensive player and, and the defensive-minded guy overall, mm -hmm. uh, embracing a wide open throw it 50 times a game you know, uh, type of uh, uh, philosophy and uh, that's a lot about him and then in, you know and in his personal life I, I concluded with the fact that you know uh, our mom died at an early age of 57 um, and a few years later you know he found love again and, and Marianne and, and uh, embraced her family and melded our family with with her family and with her Three children and, and now their children and and uh, and was able to embrace change in that way also so mm. you know being somebody that was set in his ways uh, but also willing to adapt and, and change I'll tell you the impression I always had with uh, with your dad and you and Mike especially and this was just an impression because your dad was such a an enormous presence um, and for so, sometimes for kids that's a tough thing to live up to, I mean, like you're, you're in this big shadow. But I never had a feeling that that was a problem for you or Mike. Am I right or wrong there? No, you're right. Um, you know, I never felt like I, I had to be around and, and do things. Uh, uh, he, and I look back now and now, you know, we've raised our three sons and now we have three grandsons. <laughs> and, and I appreciate the fact that he, uh, he wanted us around as much as we could be and as much as my sisters could be you know, although he was coaching a you know pretty male dominated uh, sport at the time mm -hmm. uh, so and you could just sense his enthusiasm when we were around um, you know even as, as young guys I remember you know a real treat for me as a you know when I was five six seven years old was when we were still in Baltimore to be able to go and spend a few days with him at training camp and then when I we moved down here. I was turning 11, and uh, my summer jobs were working. You know, as a ball boy, water boy, painting the fields. You know, he didn't have the big systems they have now, and uh, and he, I think, enjoyed seeing me there. And I know my mom enjoyed it because you know, with the five of us, she was happy to have one out of it. <laughs> but uh, nobody really did uh, embrace that, and, and and with Mike as well. And uh, so I, I never had a second thought about you know following in the footsteps, so to speak. Uh, and we always knew that, you know, no matter what you did, uh, people were going to say, oh, he got this job because of, you know, he's a Shula. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would have been the same if I had 
going on to be a lawyer, which at one point I thought it would, you know, oh, he wouldn't have gotten that opportunity, you know, to get into law school if he wasn't, you know, we, we dealt with that our whole lives, and, and that was certainly, you know, not a reason not to pursue your passion. Yeah. Um, you talked about the fact that uh, because of the circumstances that we're in now, that it, it had to be family. Um, and uh, I re mentioned in a report last week that, no question, generations of Dolphin players would have been there. Um, and so many of them talked about they felt this sense of family that your dad had, and they've carried it on to their, to their own families. Uh, how do you think that he, um, directly or indirectly, got that message across that family is number one? Just how he treated people, Jim. You know, it was right from day one, uh, before day one started in, in uh, bringing players in. He wanted to know about their backgrounds, their high school, you know, relationship with their high school coach, a relationship with a college coach, and their family, um, and wanted to know what kind of person was coming into the organization. Uh, and, he, and he cared about them as people. Uh, he was tough on them, but, but he truly cared about them as people. And, uh, I can't even begin to tell you, you know, the story. Mark Duber called me yesterday and told me that, uh, you know, how much uh, Dad had meant to him and how you know, he said, I'm sitting in a beautiful house in Louisiana right now, and that's because of your father. You know, he took a chance on me. He goes, I didn't know anything about football when the Dolphins drafted me. I was a world-class track athlete, but I didn't know anything about football. And your dad uh, saw that uh, I had a, a talent and I uh, was willing to spend the time to help me develop that and then, you know, help me develop as a person that, now. And, you know, I had some trials and tribulations, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I, you know, I saw – the message that he was sending, and, and it's helped me become the person that I am, the family person that I am. Interesting that you bring up Mark Duper. I mean, going back another generation, Larry Little, <clears throat> 1970, there's a whole different generation. Miami was a different place coming out of a tough period in our history, and Larry Little made mention of the fact that when he was roomed with uh, a guy who happened to be white, and it, that told him, okay, uh, color's not an issue here, and it doesn't matter to the coach, and so that says something to me about him. Yeah, that was one of the uh, the subtle uh, moves that he made. That to him, there was no other way to do it. You know, you're making up a rooming list for training camp. You're going to do it by position. Mm -hmm. That's all he thought of. And he never really talked about how significant uh, that was down here in South Florida, as you mentioned. And Larry has has said that to me as well. That mm -hmm. was. Uh, a great message not only to him and to the football team, but also to the community that saw, you know, how he was conducting himself. And, you know, it didn't matter what background you came from, you were on the team, you were, you were a teammate. And, uh, and that's a great lesson that, that uh, team sports in general, but he, you know, through being a, um, I don't know if you call it an innovator, but willing to, disregard, you know, what the, the norms had been, as you mentioned, and, you know, when he came down here in 1970, it was still Miami, mm -hmm. not Miami, and, you know, unfortunately, as you mentioned, some of the the, uh, the racial segregation that, that still existed at that time, uh, just coming off the Civil Rights Act in the early 60s, so uh, it was that was a very monumental uh, move that he made, and but he would never talk about that, he just, what other way is there to do it? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what kind of coach he was, Dave. What kind of dad was he? You know, Jim, a very uh, little difference. Uh, you know, that intensity uh, that he showed on the field. Now, we didn't quite see that as much at home, thank goodness. <laughs> um, but attention to detail, uh, caring about us, uh, wanting us to be the best that we could be. Uh, you know, I gave at the service the example of him, uh, you know, doing it the right way. I, I remember he had... Uh, giving me the task of cleaning out, sweeping out, and cleaning out the garage one day. And uh, about a half an hour into it, he comes out into the garage and, and literally gave me a seminar on the proper broom stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting quite enough dirt out at one time. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you were going to do it the right way. <laughs> but, but then again, it was, you know, to, to help me. It wasn't, you know, trying to be, you know, mean or... or uh, Whatever, but uh, uh, and then 
you know, he was of the generation that, you know, there wasn't a lot of hugging and telling you I love you and then all that, you know, it was, it was, that came through our, our mom. Uh, she was, we called her the, you know, the great communicator. Uh, but we always knew uh, through her, if he wasn't physically there, how much he cared. And, and then we would hear stories of, of how uh, I'd hear, I've heard from a, you know, a couple of uh, members of the media that said, uh, uh, guys that work for the Dolphins, the PR guys for the Dolphins, uh, Harvey Green and Mitch sure. Mm -hmm. part of their jobs on Saturdays was finding out, you know, what the Dartmouth score was, <laughs> what the, what the uh, Alabama score was, if, you know, when I was playing and Mike was playing. And then with me, you know, coaching uh, the Bengals and then Mike, uh, when he had been in other places, you know, how, how are our teams doing? Mm -hmm. uh, even before, you know, he, he prepared himself to go into his own press conferences. So, yeah. uh, and that, you know, that you knew that he cared. He, it, we, we knew that he cared and he, and he just wanted a, the best for us and, and suffered when things didn't go well and was very happy when they did. You knew that he cared even when you had to coach against him. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you it's, uh, you know, look back, we had two uh, opportunities. I, I believe that's still the only time the father and son have coached against each other and, professional sports and uh, uh, very busy week you know a lot of attention on the game and uh, but you know as a head coach you're immersed in preparation mm -hmm. and you know I remember I had to, I, I paused uh, during the national anthem you know standing there in a, a moment of, of, of quiet uh, before the ball game you know kicked off and it was scanning the other sideline and you know happened to catch his eye and ooh, yeah, yeah. that's right yeah. <laughs> 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 <You> know, that <laughs> Wow. Uh, and that gives me chills now to, you know, to think about that. Uh, and the moment after the games was even more yeah, special. Yeah, you know, was, uh, the, the first game, they, you know, I think we were close at halftime and they beat us pretty good in the second half. The mm -hmm. second game, it came down to, you know, we scored too early. Uh, Danny, you know, had a chance. And, uh, and uh, one of the early plays, we, you know, I, I still swear his knee touched the end zone when we pushed <laughs> him down. That should have been a safety and game <laughs> over. And then they hit a fourth down and 11 at uh, sideline a comeback right in front of me and back then they had the turf uh, in Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati and you could see imprints you know so the guy's foot was halfway on the line literally inches in front of me and I'm pointing at it with the official and he comes over and he goes catch and I almost lost my mind <laughs> and there were no replay at the time but uh, so anyways they go on and score and then we end up getting the ball and missing a field goal at the end to, uh, that would have won so it was an emotional ball game uh, and um you know, I'd held it together, I think, uh, pretty well, you know, shaking his hand after the game and then and then uh, going in and talking to the team and to the media. And then we had an opportunity before they left on the buses to meet in a, in a private room. And it was just uh, my wife, Leslie, uh, my dad and his wife, Marianne, and, and uh, Mr. Isinga and, and his wife, Marty. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I walked in and... Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I just lost it, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, he put his arm around me and, mm -hmm. you know, he, he knew how much it meant. So it was, uh, it was a special moment. And it's still special to you. Yeah. Yeah. He had a sense of humor, too, uh, that a lot of people didn't get a chance to see. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you saw it much more than me. In fact, when he, um, when he first met my wife, the, ironically, they had the same birthday, January 4th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I introduced her, and then she walked away, and he looked at me, and he said, yeah, Barry, you ought to kick your coverage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what, what kind of humorous moments do you remember? I mean, there, there must be so many. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, with the family, uh, and then, you know, and then, you know, Bob Greasy became basically part of our family. I know I love to hear the story when he uh, they were teeing off to play golf and and Bob a terrific golfer uh, uh, just missed one you know and it goes about six inches off the tee and my dad without missing a beat he just said Bob you used to quarterback sneak farther than that <laughs> <laughs> he had a great wit about him uh, toward the end uh, uh, I had come down during the Christmas holidays and we were sitting out on his back porch and uh, which overlooks Biscayne Bay. It was a beautiful afternoon, and a seagull flew by. And 
I said, Dad, look, that uh, you have the same color hair as that seagull. And without missing a beat, he looks at me and he, and he rubs his hand through his hair and he goes, you know, at least I still have my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, he, he had a wry sense of humor and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and kept it right, you know, to the end. A lot of guys uh, may coach in a city, but when their coaching time is up, they're out of Dodge. Your dad made South Florida his home. What, what did South Florida grow to mean to him? He's home, as you said. Uh, you know, so many great years, so many great memories. Uh, and, you know, I'd like to thank the, uh, the Dolphins, you know, first Mr. Isaac and, and then Mr. Ross, you know, and, and everybody that's been a part of the Dolphins and how they embraced him and through the years and, and made him feel special and a part of it. Uh, you know, bringing the, the new hire head coaches down to meet him and, and, and uh, making sure that they understood, you know, how important it was for them to have a relationship with Don Shula and, and wanting to tap into his uh, knowledge and, uh, and abilities to, uh, to help mentor, you know, young coaches and, mm -hmm. and that meant a, a tremendous amount to him. And, and then how he had, you know, he got early, on, he, he, he understood early on uh, in, in the profession that at the end of the day, it was entertainment and that the fans were so important. And I can honestly say that in all the times that we were out socially, that I never saw him be mean or short with, it, with anybody that came up to him. And sometimes it was literally in the course of, you know, put in between, uh, you know, an autograph piece of paper for an autograph in between the fork going in his mouth. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he'd pause and, oh, thanks for coming over. What's your name? And he'd sign and, and was always very patient. And, and that was just a small sign of, of what the community meant to him. And, and then, you know, I can't even begin to count the, the number of uh, charities that he has uh, supported and, and different causes and, and really embraced uh, South Florida and, uh, and wanted to help be, make it be as, uh, a better place. Mm. What's the message from the Shula family, Dave, to all of South Florida that has reached out to you during this difficult time? Yeah, just thank you so much for your condolences and, and uh, uh, the outpouring of, of sentiment and, uh, and grief uh, and how you know everybody uh, is mourning at his loss. And, and the fact that he won't be there anymore uh, means so much to us. And you know, he was our dad, obviously, and, and we. Um, but we always knew that he was part of a bigger <laughs> family than than ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he certainly, uh, <clears throat> you know, lived a life of great example. He did. And he did. it was. Uh, there was nothing, and, and I think if you asked any of his players, you know, there wasn't anything that he would ask them to do that he he wouldn't hadn't done himself or, or couldn't you know do himself at different stages. You know, I saw a photo the other day of you know back in the uh, in the days when he could lead. He was leading calisthenics and uh, on the ground doing you know up downs and <laughs> uh, running gassers with the guys after. And uh, mm -hmm. so they know he had been in the trenches, mm -hmm. and that, that he would be in there again if he could. Yeah. Well, I can, uh, I thank you for this time, Dave. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I can, I can see that um, your family is defined by love. And, uh, you know, love has that beautiful side of it. And, you know, this is the side of it that is difficult. But, um, you know, I know, I'm just speaking personally, when I lost my mom a couple of years ago, that um, I kept telling myself, you know what, uh, it's worth it to hurt now because of what we had. Right. And uh, I have a sense that you feel the same way. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we were blessed to have him for, for 90 years. He had a great run, and, and uh, the finality is tough, but uh, we know he's in a better place. And, you know, I had uh, Jerry Sandusky, who uh, I know Jerry. Sandusky, I know Jerry. So, you know, legendary line coach, and Jerry's up in Baltimore, mm -hmm. still involved in sports like you are. And, and uh, he called me last week, and I said, Jerry, I said, you know what's going on right now, right? And he goes, what's that? And he goes, well, up in heaven right now, 
they're doing inside run draw. <laughs> and, uh, and dad is yelling at your dad because the offensive line had missed the block. And then he's yelling at Carl Tassif because the back took the wrong hole. And then right. he's yelling at Mo Scary, the D-line coach, because the, the, the D-lineman filled the wrong gap. And he's yelling at Bill Arnsparger because the a linebacker, you know, put his head on the wrong side on the tackle. So, and they're having a great time. Right. So, you know, he's in a better place. Yeah, yeah. I'm very comfortable. Amen. Dave, thank you so much.